Good morning. I want to welcome everybody to another In My Feels episode. Today's going to be a good one, a fun one, I think. I'm going to dive in a little on... I did a mushroom trip recently, and it was absolutely mind-blowing. I'm going to talk about, you know, letting go of responsibility, um, shedding all the things that don't matter, forgiving yourself, and, and, and I want to talk more about open conversations. But, you know, before we start again, you know... Thoughts, feelings, emotions, conditionings, everything on the inside creates your outside exterior or your experience. So my question for you guys listening, our collective consciousness of In My Feels, is how are you feeling right now in this moment? And really take your time with it, you know, dive in. How are you feeling? Ask yourself, how am I feeling? Could I be feeling better? Am I feeling um, anxious? Am I feeling stressed about the day? Am I feeling happy? Am I feeling sad? Am I feeling, you know, am I watching my feelings? Am I observing my feelings? Am I f- focusing on the positivity or the negativity? Kind of really dive in on yourself. And, you know, I've, I've been receiving a lot of messages as well. And again, I, I will consistently set the challenge of asking people how they feel. Because, you know, it's, it's that passing thing. I know I used to do our work, you know, how's it going? Oh, yeah, yeah I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. It's always the kind of, it's like the robot reaction to actually how you are feeling, but it's just a quick conversation, especially because today we're always in a rush for everything. So we feel like we don't have enough time, but in theory, time doesn't exist. I mean, factually, I guess it does exist for our society, but in theory, it doesn't exist. So we put such a constraint on time periods of being awake, time periods of being asleep, and it's a conditioning that just kind of keeps running and running and running. But when I let go of the kind of time aspect of it, I see spaces in time, spaces in time for me to be able to do what I need to do, uh, to have fun, to experience life, to love life, to, 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 to enjoy myself, to feel like I have enough time for family, for work, for, for making money, for all these type of things, because I don't put a consensus on time. I've, I've slowly, slowly unraveled the conditioning of, of the effects of time. Okay, so I, I want to give you some backstory kind of on, on the kind of, you know, the, the, I, I wouldn't call it a mushroom trip because um, people, you know, explain to me, oh, the drugs and this. I don't necessarily see, you know, marijuana or mushrooms or that kind of natural aspect of, I guess, earthly substances as drugs, even though I guess we could refer to them as drugs. I, I refer to them as experiences. It was my um, my wife's birthday, you know, 11, 11. I guess she, she says she was born at 11 o'clock. So everything kind of aligned. And then we invited um, a bunch of our closest friends, uh, I guess, over over at my house. It was kind of a, a, a kind of low key type of thing. And we um, it was like a ceremony. So we we this woman who's amazing uh, came over, had all these beautiful sound bowls. We did a sound bath, which incorporated it. And I guess it ended up being 11 people, which was kind of, you know, I, I guess that's kind of the manifestation of the birthday and everything else. And, you, you, you know, you're kind of relaxing, you're getting everything ready, everyone's coming in, everyone's calm. And, you, you know, you go, you do a blessing ceremony, so everyone blesses each other. We say positive things about each other. And then I get, you set an intention. So an intention is almost like, you know, I hope I have a great experience. I'm open to receiving any message. I'm open to really diving in onto my, into my emotions, my feelings, really listening to the beautiful music, the sound bowls, the crystal bowls that are being played and everything else. And you can set any intention, you know, it could be, you know, I hope to make more money or I hope to have a, you know, an incredible career. I hope to make, you know, meet someone and fall in love. I hope to deeply fall in love with myself. I hope to be, you know, anything, you can choose anything. So we made space in my living room and we laid blankets everywhere and it looked, it looked really nice candle lit. Everything was super, super beautiful. And then we, we kind of, I guess, take the first dose drink, drink, I guess it was like a hot chocolate drink with that had the, the, the kind of shrooms in it. And then you kind of just lay down on a, a pillow, a blanket, you, you know, you're cozy. Everyone else is lying down. Everyone's chilling. Beautiful music starts with the sound bowls, the crystal bowls, the vibrations happening. And about an hour in, you start feeling some things, some um, like an like an opening within yourself. You know, usually me, when, I, when I'm when i doing something, it, 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 it's always, you know, I guess I should be reinventing myself for, for new experiences. So if you're doing the same thing, like going to the to movie theater or or going out to dinner, you should be in reinventing yourself as, as a new experience. Instead, we base everything based on older experiences. It's like the time when you go out and you have a great time out. And then you try and recreate that time at a later date and it never is as good. 
because you're recreating a previous experience instead of trying to recreate a new experience. And that's what I mean by opening up. So again, when I do the, 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 the kind of mushroom trip again, I have to let go of the last experience of how incredible it was, which I'll dive more in detail in, and move into a new space of a new experience. Very difficult concept to do. But that's how we should approach everything. Even a new day at work is not the same day as yesterday. But we go back in to that same headspace, that same, and which always leads us kind of into that disappointment. So, so we're lying down and we're, you know, we're, we're the music starts and everything else. And then the opening starts happening. And me, you know, I'm someone, I guess I'm a planner, which I'm trying to uncondition the kind of planning aspect of it of, you know, is everyone warm? Is everyone comfortable? How is everyone feeling? All these type of things, which can sometimes weigh you down. And it, it does sometimes weigh me down because I want to know that everyone's having a good time. I want to make sure everyone has water. Everyone's being fair. Everyone's, everything is, is, is perfect for everyone. When now I should be focusing on myself and I know it's not a selfishness. It's just, you, you, there's a weight behind thinking about all those things or worrying about all those things and making sure, you know, is my wife okay? My baby's in bed sleeping, all these type of things. Is everything just okay? And then once the, the, the kind of shroom starts kicking in, all of that kind of whittles away. I guess the kind of responsibility of it, the worry of it, everything else. And it's this, this layer, this layer in front of you starts kind of shedding and it starts shedding even more as the kind of trip starts escalating and you're breathing and it's beautiful. You're hearing all this music and you're like, I, I hope everyone else is feeling this and I hope everyone else is doing this. But it's from a place of openness, not a place of worry or weight. And I, and, and I, you know, I have all these experiences that I experienced d- during the trip, but I cannot describe them because it's nothing i've ever experienced before it's very difficult to it's like if you was to see something you've never seen before and you're trying to describe it and it's something that hasn't really existed to you before it's a very difficult concept to kind of do so i'm going to try my best but you know everyone's having their own experiences and you know everything else and and i just felt this i don't know I, at one point i i guess i was you know i, I read a lot of books and the conversation with god book is a very prominent book for me I guess I, I, I wanted to have an open conversation with God. You know, God concept to me is very foreign. It's not really something that I've practiced or anything else. I know there is, you know, a God or goddess or, or, or higher power, but I also know that we are of that. So therefore we are, we are gods or goddesses. So I'm speaking, I guess, in my own mind. And, I, and to me, I'm having a conversation with God. And it's just a normal conversation. I can't remember what the conversation was about. And in my, I came to the realization and see, when you're, when you're on streams, but this is something you realize too, everything is now driven. So if you hear something like music, you become that instrument, you become that, that musical sound. It's such a strange concept to, to, to understand, but you do. And then you hear another piece of music and you become that. So if it's like a string or a guitar, you become that string or that, that music note, not essentially the actual instrument, you become the note. And then nothing exists but that note. And then you hear something else and like you, you feel an itch on your face and you become the itch, but it's not, it's not a fear-based thing. It's, 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 it's a place of love. It, it becomes an openness. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I'm having this conversation with God and, and it's going deeper and deeper, but not deeper in terms of fear-based. It's, it's deeper in terms of I'm conversing with, with whoever. And then, and towards the end, I realize I was talking to myself. And I know it's, it sounds funny, but, but it wasn't a fact of me talking to myself. It was me talking to God as myself, which made me realize I am God. Not I am the God or the, the whole powerful, the higher power. I am God, which means I am of God. We're all part of the same thing. We're all connected. And every single uh, person at the same time was kind of feeling these emotions and feeling this, I guess, this trip of, of the shrooms and was really diving in. And we were all experiencing that together, that oneness that, that we all talk about, you know, we're all one, we all came from the same source, we all came from source energy, from everything else. And we were just diving in and everyone was having their individual experience based on themselves. My wife lost a, a very close auntie of hers um, during the pandemic and everything else. And I didn't know this because, you know, we, we were sitting next to each other, but she was in her own zone. I was in my own zone and everyone else was kind of collectively doing their thing. And she connected to, to her auntie who passed away. And connected as she felt she was holding her and she was telling her things and, and things that really resonated. And 
because you know we're in the we're in uh, Los Angeles and my wife's family are uh, in the UK. So the grieving process for her has been a, 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 from a distance. So she, I guess during that trip, she, she felt like she needed to grieve and she did, but it wasn't from a place of, of kind of it, it, sadness. It was, it was based on sadness, but it was a grieving, which is part of the natural emotions, you know, grief and anger and, you know, love and fear, but grief it, it, it is part of the, 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 the kind of love and fear aspect of the two emotions, because Grief is is losing someone who you loved very much. But then it's also the fear element of you never thinking you're never going to see that person ever again. And and she went through this whole beautiful experience. And, and you know, her auntie told her, I'm, I'm happy. I'm in a great place. You know, they, and she gave us some messages for the family and everything else. You know, the next day, my, my, my wife felt this huge lift. She felt incredible. She felt great because she had to experience that during the whole process. And again, nothing else mattered. There was no bills. There was no money. There was no time. There was no concept of time. You know, we started at seven o'clock and we ended up finishing at one thirty in the morning. At no point did it drag. It went super quick, super quick because there was no concept of time. No one cared about the time. No one worried about working the next day. No one worried about the bills. No one worried about all these kind of things that, that we make such a, a, a magnified expression of ourselves externally when none of it matters internally it's a really really strange concept when you come to the realization that you are all that matters and we are all that matters and everything else doesn't matter the houses the cars the bills the 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 negativity the stress we put on ourselves the everything kind of negated out of the fear element of it doesn't doesn't exist and then we came to an, an experience of love. Everybody in that room became love. Such a, like, and now I understand why these things are banned. Because the evidence is clear to see. And, you know, alcohol was, was banned at one point because when you drink alcohol, it, it, it allows you to open yourself up. You know, some some people, I mean, for me personally, it, it did. It enables me to open things up to to understand that there's something bigger than myself out there. Same with, with, with you know, marijuana and weed for me. When I first started smoking it, I didn't start smoking until I was, I don't know, 34, 33. So it was very late in life, you know. For me, it was um, because when you grow up of a certain, in a certain society and, you know, we had no money and everything else, you'd see, you know, drug addicts on the streets and and you'd see how how they were and they you know the bottom of your street the bottom of your house you know you knew them they were they were part of your community we were always told that that marijuana is a gateway drug to all of that so i had a very negative aspect on on the kind of marijuana smoking and everything else and i did not want to touch it it's only when i went to jamaica and and i smoked and it opened my mind to looking at the stars questioning the stars questioning who I who am I questioning all these type of things and then you realize why kind of governments ban these type of things because they don't want you thinking they don't want you to question collectively question anything it's you know you start questioning religion you start questioning governments you start questioning pharmaceutical companies you start questioning pretty much everything in your life and you start asking questions within and for me now, I know Colorado is is kind of opening the, the, the gates for the kind of the shrooms and everything else. And a bunch of um, retreats are opening up to cure, you know, uh, addiction and depression and everything else. And I can see the benefits of these type of substances. And again, uh, this is not me being irresponsible or saying this is only what worked. This is what happened to me and to, to the people around me. And it was in a very controlled situation. We had a, you know, a professional there and everything else. So this was a, a way we could do it. We felt safe within ourselves. So yeah, we was in a, you know, a great space. It was a, it was a safe space. And I wanted to do it around people who, who I felt safe around and who I loved uh, doing it with and, and everything else who I've experienced life with. And it led me on to, to, to kind of other notions, other questions of how much pressure I put on myself. And I've spoken about this on previous shows and, the unnecessary pressure, how much pressure we put on ourselves, which create anxiety and depression and fear and all these things that we kind of 
do to ourselves because again i'm all about accountability practically spiritually speaking it has to be us it cannot be anyone else we cannot Look outside our, uh, ourselves for answers from someone else until you answer them yourselves. You know, I understand that, you know, you can feel depressed because of someone else. I understand that all these type of things, but essentially it's you feeling the way you're feeling. No one can make you feel what you're feeling. The shroom trip enabled me to have space, space enough to have conversations, open conversation. Talk about things you've never spoken about. And, you know, living in L.A., you look up at the sky. This was another prominent thing that, that was kind of the theme for the night amongst everyone. You cannot see any stars. That, you know, it's so bright. You see maybe one or two and you see the moon and everything else. When you're tripping on shrooms, you can see every single star constellation in the sky with clarity. It is strange. And the thing is, you can say what you're tripping on is not a real experience because it opens up your mind. It's a psychedelic or all that type of stuff. But every single star constellation was there. It was real. So if I can see that as real, who's to say that the experience or what you're experiencing isn't also real? I mean, for me, it's evidence that it has to be. It has to be. How can it not? And that's kind of because, you know, I had my star map out and everything else, which is an app on your phone, which tells you where all the stars are. And it was exactly that. It wasn't like I was seeing stars that weren't there. They were there. And it, and, and it made you step into this place of, you know, letting go of these kind of things that don't matter. You know, I, I, you know, I don't have the career I want. I don't have the money I want. I don't have this. I don't have that. And then you start flipping it around. Well, I'm alive. I'm breathing. I have my health. I can make connections if I want to. There's people around. Let me start loving myself. Let me start enjoying myself. Let me start you know, uh, doing things. Let me start opening up conversations within myself that I've never had. And this is what this kind of experience enabled me to do more so than what I've been doing. It's kind of that leveling up, which I, which I speak about with us collectively. And we have to always level up within ourselves. And again, it, and, and it kind of brings me to, back to this, cause you know, I've been getting some comments on my Instagram about the kind of Kyrie Irving po- podcast and, and everything else of, we have a sense of duty to be vaccinated to protect others, which I understand, which is great. Of course, I have a lot of compassion for, for, for everyone and anything. But again, it's back to that, which kind of enabled me to open up too. I mean, do you notice the kind of where we're stepping into is this kind of two sides, this massive divide, which, which, is, kind of sta- uh, which is kind of a statement, which is kind of naturally progressing based on the fear element of, of what's happening, covid it's supposed to bring bring over to, together. It's done the opposite. Media's create divide. Governments create divide. Big farmers create divide. They've put out enough misinformation, and I know there's a lot of misinformation out there. But when you divide, you conquer everyone. So you divide little groups who are arguing amongst themselves, and then you kind of conquer the whole. You know, you see that you see what's happening with when someone has a disagreement. You know, Kyrie Irving. All he said is, "I don't want to get vaccinated. It's my choice. I feel that it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for my body. You know." Through my experience, this is something I don't want to do. And then the floodgates open. This guy is selfish. He, he's putting other people at risk. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's doing this. He's doing that. And I see the elements of it. It's, it's his choice. It's his free will. This is his manifestation. This is what he wants. Now, and you see the other side of, of people who are condemning him, condemning him. Well, he should lose his job. He should do this. He, should, he needs to protect other people. He needs to do that. But athletes are tested every day. They're tested all the time, even if they are vaccinated. It's kind of the natural progression. And as I said before, I'd rather go into a restaurant where everyone is tested to know that everyone's negative than someone who is is vaccinated but can still get COVID. Again, it's the kind of natural consensus of, of the message I'm trying to put collectively for us to enable ourselves to have a free mind. And again, don't get me wrong, like vaccinations are great, as I said, for society. It, it adds to the collective consciousness of health. But but this is doing the opposite because it's it's creating the kind of unhealthy aspect notion wise theory wise to people who are unvaccinated but people who aren't unvaccinated they feel they don't need it so therefore they're in a healthy space what happened to open conversations and what happened to compassion aaron Rodgers is another perfect example he's been condemned for saying he's immunized if he feels he's immunized how is anyone supposed to question him on that he didn't say he was vaccinated he didn't say i've had the injection he said he was immunized i knew what immunized meant it means he has a way of Boosting his immune system to allowing himself to fight whatever comes to him. That's his free will. That, that's his universe. That's his manifestation. Again, as an athlete, you're, you're tested 
so many times, ridiculous amounts of times. And both have stated to them that they're, they're not anti-vax. They're, 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 they're pro-choice. But yet media and government and everyone else labels them as anti-something just because it doesn't agree with them. We have to step out collectively consciously to this openness. Let's open ourselves. And I think this is the manifestation of the lockdown, of us feeling closed within ourselves, of us being restricted and everything else. That's why I feel like lockdowns create more unhealthy situations than allowing people to, to, to be free and be out. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree with masks and mandate, mask mandates and all that type of stuff. I don't agree with vaccination mandates and people who are losing their jobs over the choice that they have. And I spoke about this on, on the Kyrie Irving, but literally people have just been messaging me today all on my Instagram. And I've, I've replied with openness and I respect and I appreciate the openness conversations that we can have. And again, we have to agree to disagree, which is fine. It doesn't mean I'm right. doesn't mean you're wrong. doesn't mean, you know, any of it. Uh, just because we believe something to be true doesn't mean it's right. But there's an openness to it. And that's the beauty that we have to create within this collective consciousness within ourselves. And I'm not encouraging anyone again to go out and do a, a shroom trip or anything else. This is a very controlled situation we had and and to know the right doses and to know the right thing and to have someone there watching you and you know talking you through things and all this type of stuff but for me it was such a beautiful experience and the messages i got after from my from my family and friends who were just experiencing nothing but sheer bliss and sheer bliss of opening your mind to converse to experience things you've never experienced and take yourself outside that comfort zone and to experience love 